Hey guys, welcome back to the layout. This is Dane here as always, and I kind of figured it was time for another how-to video. And I decided I would go ahead and do this one since I have cars on hand that are weather. Um, so far we've covered tank cars, we've covered hoppers, and um, I don't think we've covered box cars yet, but I'll get to that later. But one of these cars that I haven't discussed yet, and I said I was going to do, but kept putting off, was the gondola. Now, gondolas are a very important rail car to the road, obviously. They have a major purpose. There's large gondolas, there's smaller gondolas, they haul all kinds of materials, and they're a very important rail car to roster, and they're also very important to model. So, in this video, I'm going to show you how to weather one of these classic gondolas, and what we have here is an Atlas car. This is uh, one of their newer thrall cars, uh, CRDX 5000, and these are right out of the box, I'm going to say very, very nice. These are modern, they've got the safety stripes on them, and they're they just look incredible. I'm really, I really like these. And these are pretty well, I'm going to say, easy to do. So you'll actually find this video goes by a little quicker because there's not as much to do with these. You can go as extensive or as heavy as you want weathering-wise with these, but for a modern gondola, there's not that much to do. And as you'll see, um, there's, not, there's no real science to it. It's just like weathering any other car, but the nice thing is you don't really have to worry about weathering the roof or anything like that. It's very simple. All you're doing is the sides, the ends, the underbody. That's pretty much it. And the, the, the one part that's probably the most extensive that you really want to take your time with is the inside because that's obviously the part that's going to get the most wear. And we'll cover that, of course, uh, when we get to it. But for the most part, this will just be a video on the gondolas and you'll see that it goes by a little quicker. I'll discuss my techniques. And again, you know, it's, it's pretty much just like weathering any other rail car. The only difference is that it's a smaller car and it's a lot easier to do. So we'll go ahead and jump right into this, guys, and I think you'll enjoy this one. So we'll go ahead and look at the car we're going to be weathering today. What we have here is a Thrall 2743 gondola. This is a Chicago freight car, uh, 5000. Um, one little note on this number, I might change that to a more casual number. 5000 is kind of out of the ordinary, so I, it, it, I'll probably change that number later on. But right now I'm just going to give you the basic weathering and show you how to do that. So I might patch it later on and renumber it. Um, but I mean, my thoughts on this car, this is the newer Atlas front, obviously, and I gotta say, I mean, these are really, really nice. These are top of the line, and Atlas just did a fantastic job on these modern gondolas. They look really good. Um, I, I'm really happy with them, and they look really good. But as you can see, this one right out of the box, it's pretty clean. It looks good, though, and that's the point. But we're going to turn something, a new, fresh-looking model like this, into something like this. Look at that. So, with a few techniques I'll show you, we'll go ahead and get right into this. Um, it's pretty pretty easy, so we'll go ahead and uh, get started. So my materials of choice, again, will be my base coat of acrylic paints, which I have my black, my earth brown, and my white, which, my, which are my weathering material of choice. And when we get around to it, um, when we get a little more extensive and the wet work is done, we'll go ahead and do some powder weathering with my new AIM products, um, weathering powders. These are top of the line. I've wanted to get some of these for a while, but I just recently got these at a hobby shop. But these work really well, but and um, they, they're really well, and I'll show you how to use those. So the first thing we're going to do with this um, is we're going to take the gondola off the trucks, and we're going to set the trucks aside for a minute. We'll get around to those in a minute. And with these cars, I always like to start at the bottom. It's easier to work and work your way up and then do the sides real quick and like I said there's not much to do with this but just with a little bit of earth brown and black I'm gonna mix my earth tone together and just weather this and I'm gonna use a little heavier of a black color to kinda of try to mellow it out just to kinda of make it look um, you know grimy but not too rusty and old this like I said is a relatively newer car this is recently refurbished by CRDX so I'm gonna to try to keep it relatively clean but what you're going to do is basically start at the bolsters like I always do and I'll work my uh, way around the coupler boxes and kind of back towards all the brake rigging and stuff so I, I'll just start at this end here zoom in on it and what you do is you just start brushing some of that grime on like this and again you'll see that I'm going very light but then when you get to the actual floor of the car you blotch it on like this to kind of represent the look of like a uh, spray or kick up from the wheels just very lightly though as you can see um, again I'm trying to keep this car relatively clean it's a newer car so I'm just keeping things uh, relatively simple but you just give it each individual little uh, section in between these panels uh, just a little touch of uh, weathering just to kind of keep them clean and another thing to mention um, with these Atlas cars is they got tons of photo at or these all kinds of uh, brake rigging underneath and it's important to be really careful with these and 
It's better off if you airbrush this, but with this, I like to air. I like to uh, just hand weather them. So when you when you're doing it like this, you just want to be really careful to kind of try not to hit those pipes. But as you can see, it's kind of hard to do. But um, they're not really even in place here. They just kind of float. So it, it's really easy to strike them and knock them out of position. But if that does happen, um, you just put them back in place in, with your fingers. And you can even, I'll probably actually go and tack these down with some glue so that they stay in place after the weathering is done. Go ahead and flip this to the other side. Hit this side here. Focus that weathering on the coupler box and in these little crevices here. Remember, most of the grime is again going to be centered around the, where the truck is and where all that kick up spray is going to be. So you just want to work that into these areas like this. And hit this side just very softly. But you can see not too much, not too much grime, but just very simple and it gives the car the illusion that it's been in service for a few years. But again, not too dirty. I'm going to go ahead and start in the brake rigging here. Get a little bit more paint. Um, let's try to get a little more black. And what I'm going to do is come in here and then just start hitting these little areas like this, just kind of dry brushing them. I'm just going to get a little more paint off my brush here, but I'm just dry brushing them as you can see, hitting all those little edges and corners. And with something like this, you want to hit it at all the angles so you move it and you just keep working that grime into all those little crevices and such like this and kinda make some uh, streaking on these ribs underneath kinda indicate some road grime or some dust build up on the underneath of the chassis and I'll go ahead and start working on this area but I won't show that part because it's pretty much just like this end here so the next part you'll see is me working on the ends so we'll go ahead and move on. So as you can see, the whole underbody is weathered. And again, very simple, very subtle, not too much. Again, keeping it pretty clean. And as you can see, it looks pretty good. It's uh, prepped and ready for the trucks to be reinstalled when we get to it. But we'll weather the trucks in a minute. But for now, we're going to go ahead and start at the ends. And then we'll move on to the sides. Uh, the ends, again, are pretty easy. And depending on how heavy or light the the weathering is it's it's pretty straightforward and there's not too much to do but you just want to kind of build up your grime layer very softly it's it's very easy to overdo it in this particular area especially because I'm trying to model a relatively newer car so it's very easy to overdo it and you want to avoid that so you want to build your layers up um, kind of try to <laughs> get a better angle here but you just want to kind of build a small layer of grime up at a time and you just want to take it very very easily it's very easy to overdo it and I'm going to just kind of try to just model some dust as you can see I'm just keeping it very very soft very gentle not too much get a little more paint just kind of start to streak it down and I'm going to try to model some of this uh, kick up on the ends here I'm just going to take it work it in the areas around the coupler box underneath on the hose and I'm going to get a little bit on this coupler now real quick while we're here with these couplers. I don't really particularly like these couplers. This is the only downside with the Atlas model is these crappy couplers, but because the coupler boxes are scale size, there's really no way you can change these. You can't really add KDs to these or anything. So that's kind of stupid in my opinion, but I mean they were trying to model these as in like a scale form and these are I mean they're still nice, but despite the couplers, I mean they still function well, but I mean I wish I could change those, but you really can't with these. There's no way you can actually change those. They don't they can't actually come out, but um, other than the, other than the problem with the couplers, I mean, they still they still look okay. But since um, since there's no way of changing these, I'm just going to go ahead and weather the couplers. And don't forget to hit them at all the angles. It doesn't take that much either. And I'm going to hit the top of this uh, platform and then kind of start to streak it down like this. So that's looking pretty good, as you can see. And we'll go back with some powder weathering later on. But for now, we'll go ahead and move on to the side of the car. So as you can see, the end of the car is done. Again, very, very light, very clean looking. It's just mostly kick up and dust, uh, the road grime. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is um, we're going to work on the side of the car. And again, this is very, very easy. Um, I'm not liking the sliding effect, though. Maybe that will help. What I'm going to try to do, I'm going to try to readjust my camera here so you can see better. 
Now I'm going to attempt to start weathering the sides of this car here. See if this this helps. Yeah, a little bit. Not too much though. Okay. So I'm just going to take a little bit of my earth brown and black again. And it's mostly black, so I'm trying to model a relatively darker shade of grime here. Um, and then what I'm going to do is just dry brush. I'm going to try to focus it mostly on the ends of the car like this. And as you can see, what I'm going to start doing is kind of building it up at the very base of the car where the kick up is going to be from the trucks, as you can see like this. But just very, very, very softly as you can see, not, not too crazy. I don't want to overdo it, as you can see get a little bit of excess streaking but when something like that happens you can just take it and uh, wipe a little bit of that off with a q-tip it works just fine and I'm just gonna keep moving down here and you can see even with a practically dry brush it still leaves enough grime on there to highlight things to kinda give that hint of just a little bit of dust but that's really what I'm trying to do here I'm not so much trying to weather the car but just kinda try to make it look dusty is what I'm going for here just a little more spray at the bottom a little bit around this rib area here kinda of just streaking it down always keep your strokes kinda of going downwards never go like this always keep them flowing downwards that's the key remember that um... That, that's your little uh... pro tip of the day um, i'm just gonna keep working down here and as you can see you know just keeping it very simple and again i'm just gonna focus it on the bottom and then work it towards the top, just like on the real cars. And just like that. Look at that. Doesn't that look nice? A little bit too much there, that's alright. I'll zoom in on out here. And there you have it. As you can see, you know, it, it goes to show, you know, um, not every car is a rust bucket, you know. Um, you still have a lot of cleaner cars like this, and it's good to try to model some of these like this. And that, you know, I could have gone crazy on this, but I didn't. I wanted to keep this relatively clean, and that's the key to weathering cars to make them look better. You got to remember that not every car is a rust bucket. You have a lot of cars like this out in the real world that are still relatively clean. It's good to model cars like this. So as you can see, that's what I was kind of trying to aim for here. So the next step will be to go ahead and hit the other end and then I'll get the other side and we'll go ahead and add some uh, new safety stripes to this. So as you can see the car is equipped with factory safety stripes and which is fine they look good and they're scaled to white just right but um, in my roster since all my cars are equipped with the actual reflective safety stripes which is the tape material as I showed before I'm gonna go ahead and change these to actually being reflective safety stripes. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I've already cut all my stripes out to size and I have them in the correct size bands and what I'm going to do for this end one here, it's actually in the incorrect location. As you can see, it's actually coming up and going over this little um, tack board here where they have like uh, bad order tags placed. And as you can see, they just printed that stripe right over. That's not very accurate. And actually, in reality, what they would do is either put the stripe here or they'd put it underneath these handrails. And in this case, it's underneath the handrail. So what I'm going to do is slide it underneath like this and then apply it like this. And what I'll do next is I'm going to get a little black paint and I'll go over this later with some chalks and it'll blend everything right in but I'm just going to go ahead and cover up this old stripe here kind of blend it in I'm just using some flat black to kind of blend it in as you can see and it just disappears and it'll look better once it's weathered it'll just disappear so we'll go ahead and keep applying the new stripes You know, I just take the old ones and put them right over, or take the new ones, excuse me, the old ones, and I just apply them right over the old, like this. That one actually came off. I'm actually going to jump ahead a little bit and get this one real quick for a reason. I'll show you just real quick. Um, what I modeled here, you can see I actually painted over this safety stripe here a little bit. And what I'm trying to model is a safety stripe that's deteriorated or peeled off a little bit. And as you can see, I just cut a little piece 
a, a little scrap piece decides to make it look like a, one of the safety stripes that's been uh, deteriorated over time like this. And it's a good thing to model one of those because you see that a lot on rolling stock is the safety stripes that kind of deteriorate. So I'm going to go ahead and finish off and put the last band on this end right over the old like this. Just like that. Uh, it's being that it's a black car, this actually might work. But what I'm going to do is try to see if I can get these to reflect for you. That's what I'll do is I'll take my flashlight again, and boom, there they are. You can see they're actually reflecting, which is pretty dang cool. Looks nice. So now it's time to move on to the inside of the mall. And what I'm going to do is take some earth brown, my black again. And what I'm going to do is do a base coat of wet weathering, and then we'll finish up with some chocks. But what you're going to do is just roughly take it like this. And I just start applying it, as you can see, like this. But then once you do, once you get once you get the paint on there and you get the sides all wet, you take it and again you work on that vertical stroke like this. Never go sideways, always go upwards like this. And then try to keep it so that it's streaking down realistically like this. As you can see. Get a little more paint over here. Got a little dry in this section, so we'll probably go over that, but it'll all blend right in when we get to the chocks. Keep streaking it up. Dang it, my brush is getting in the way here. There we go. Just continue to streak it down like this. And actually hit this again. There we go. Some more paint. I'll go ahead and hit this end here. Just in the same manner. Nothing crazy on that one, just gonna hit it. And this is just the base coat of weathering anyway, so it doesn't really have to be perfect. It'll all get uh, covered up anyways. This is just like your base coat, really. Where it's like, consider it like a primer, if you will. Um, having a base coat of weathering like this, so that there's there's more of a surface for the chalks or, and powders to work on, uh, so that they look better. It's basically like a primer, you can say. Um, so we'll go ahead and hit the floor here, and I'm gonna get a little more paint. I'm actually gonna take my bottle and uh, get some more. Get a little bit though, not too much. We're almost done with the wet washes anyway, so I don't need too much more paint. And now on the floor, what you do, um, we'll get to the si that side in a minute, but I'm just going to show you the floor to go ahead and get started, um, just to keep moving. But when you get to the floor, what you do, I find that it works best to start at the very base of the car like this in the corners, and then fan it out towards the middle like this, as you can see kind of working like that and then you just start kind of fanning it out like this that's what I found to work really the best for me anyways I'm just gonna keep working it in with the bottom you kinda of want it to have this textured appearance too and blotching is the best way to do this and it actually does add a little texture to it but you want like a, a textured base just like in real life kind of that rusty corroded metal is going to be kind of like that so that's what I'm kind of trying to go for here and once we get to the chocks you'll just see how it just pops all this uh, extra effort will really pay off as you'll see just keep working it in. And while we're here, I'm going to go ahead and finish the floor like this. I'll go ahead and start hitting the uh, top sill like this. You want to kind of model those scratches and stuff. Just hit in random areas like this. But around the corners, you kind of want to concentrate most of that weathering so that it's fully covered, just like the real things. 
but that top of that sill is usually where a lot of that grime and dust is going to be and a lot of scratches and gouges are going to be starting but um, I'm not going to try to model any scratches and gouges on this particular car because it's relatively newer and in most of the photos that I've seen of these cars they're still pretty clean like I said so I'm not going to try to model any of those today Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and move on to the other side of the car and then we'll go do the, uh, the chalk pestle weathering and the powders. Alright, so now that we got the um, interior of the car painted and ready to go, we're going to go ahead and do our, our powder weathering to enhance the rust effects and such. And um, with my new product I recently got, I got this uh, AIM Products weathering powder. I actually got several shades of rust tones, but for this I'm going to be using a medium rust tone. And with this stuff, it works very well. The key to it, though, is it's very, very concentrated. You do not need that much. You literally just want to get a little brushful like this, and a little goes a long way. I mean, that's actually a little too much right there, but you're going to just kind of go in there, and I'm just going to actually kind of move it around a little bit like that because it literally does not take much. And then what you do, as you can see, it just instantly starts to kind of it just instantly covers like that as you can see and it's very 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 concentrated as you can see and that's actually a little too much but we'll we'll fix that in a minute and if any little scratches and gouges like that happen it's actually realistic so kind of let that happen if it does it's just the kind of the paint peeling off but I didn't actually clear coat the underbody for this particular reason because I kind of wanted to have a few little scratches working it with a dry brush like this and being that it's just dry acrylic it kind of it has a tendency to kind of scratch off like that but that's all right. That's that's perfectly fine. But as you can see, look at that. Look at the difference with those powders. Tanya, it looks really good. I'm gonna get a little more. Not too much though. I'm just gonna continue to kind of hit random areas, just where the just little areas where the rust is just kind of just starting to build up. As you can see, mostly in this end here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and try to hit the sides a little. Again, not, not too much powder though, I don't want to overdo it, but just a little bit in random spots like this. And you really got to work the stuff in really well, as you can see. As you can see what I'm doing, I'm just actually, instead of taking more powder out of the can, I'm just reusing the stuff that falls to the floor. You can see I just, with this stuff, the key is to really work it in like that. You can see that's looking pretty good. And here I might keep it a little cleaner for variety. And now I'm going to just very lightly hit this end flap, this uh, end real quick. So here's where we are now, and as you can see, it looks really good. Now the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and layer it some more. My um, rust tones are already done, but I'm going to go ahead and try to model some fresh rust here. So what I'm going to do is go back to my pestle pan, and I'm going to take some fresh rust, orange, bright orange like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a hobby knife, and I'm just going to chisel some of this off like this. And you don't need that much. Um, this is a very overpowering color, and I'm just going to, as you can see, put it in a few little areas like this. Um, just to model a little, a few little areas of fresh rust like that. Go ahead and put that back. I'll take my brush, and if you can see this, I'll go ahead and zoom in just a little. What you do is you just start fanning it out like this, and it'll just kind of start to add a little more highlight to that to kind of make a the illusion like there's a little more like fresh rust is just starting um, kinda like that so now what I'm gonna work on next is a little mud splatter with gondolas they usually get a little um, a little muddy and a lot of times you'll see a gondola with a lot of like heavy spray on the side 
from like mud splatter. So what I'm going to do is take a little white and I'm going to take a nice stiff bristle brush like this, my flat large brush like this, and I'm going to take my ruler or something stiff like this where it can spray and then I'm just going to go to the sides like this and just hit little areas like this as you can see. And then what you do is you take a brush and you streak that mud splatter down like this. Very simple. I'll do some on the ends and the underbody and then we'll go ahead and add some to the inside as well. Alright, so as you can see we got all the spray done and again I just used my brush like I showed you and I just added these little rust these uh, rust spots, um, these little mud splatter spots and then I streaked it down a little bit. Um, this is a common feature with these guns but um, it's, it's good to model and it really enhances the detail. There's that really nice textured inside weathering job. Looks good. Take you over to the other side. Pretty much the same though. Got those nice reflective safety stripes. And there's the inside. So at this point the gondola is done. What I'm going to do next is go ahead and clear coat it and put it into service. Um, the one thing I will mention though with these, um, I probably will have to gather up some scrap metal, which I use real scrap metal for my guns, and I'll probably take some and um, glue a little like excess at the bottom and the little edges of the corners and on the floor to model a gondola that's been recently uh, used in scrap metal and then when they were unloaded because usually with guns like this when they unload them they usually don't get all the metal there's usually still a lot of debris left inside of these cars so I'll have to uh, try to go back and model that later on but for now um, it's looking pretty good um, so I guess that's, that at this point in time that's that's pretty much it. Like I said, with gondolas, it's very easy to do. So there you have it. That's um that's how you weather a gondola, really. And like I said, you can do this as little as as heavy or as light as you want. It really depends on what you're modeling. If you're modeling an older gondola, obviously you'll want to do it a little heavier. But a newer car like this, you want to keep relatively clean, and that's what I did here. And uh, this car, I think, came out really good. It looks nice, and it's pretty much ready to go. Um, so these two will obviously be going into service on my model road hauling scrap metal and uh, hopefully I can get some loads made for them down the road but for now that's pretty much it I hope you guys enjoyed this video I hope you were uh, I hope this was very helpful I hope you learned a few things um, if you have any questions about anything like that please again feel free to contact me um, be sure to check out my Facebook page Dan's Custom Trains facebook.com um, and uh, be sure to like as well um, but for now, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and until next time, take care.